Hello, hello, friends. Today I'm sharing an easy way to make trifold Christmas card with the help of die cutting. That's the card that we will be making in today's video. I've done mine in classic white Christmas colors, lots of white space and just hints of rose gold accents. Keep watching to learn how you can make this kind of card yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Yana Smakula and I'm hoping you will love this video. Now I'm using a special die set today to create this trifold card design. Not every die out there is going to work for this idea, so you might have to do some searching in your stash to see if you have a die that could work for this design if you don't have this specific die. The die that I'm using today is brand new Amazing Paper Grace November Die of the Month Club die from Spellbinders. So it's actually a die that is a part of a new subscription program from Spellbinders that just launched this month. I have shared some videos featuring Spellbinders Club dies, the small die of the months and the large die of the months in the past, and I'm telling you guys, they just keep getting better and better. This particular one is designed by Becca Feekin. In my world, she is the queen of elegant, functional, and well thought out dies, and this die set is no different. So these are all the dies that come in APG November 2018 die of the month. Not everything that you see on the screen, just the dies on the left hand side here. I used just a few of those for my cards today. I did not use the outer frame at all as I'm more of a clean and simple kind of girl and I wanted my cards to have a very minimalistic look and feel to them. I did use the inner frame dies, there's three of them and I used all of them, or actually two of them, to make my trifold card today. I also used the Santa and the reindeer die. I have it going across my card. The little holly leaf dies, and of course, the buildings and the trees. You can use all of these together, or you can by all means use those separately in combination with your other dies. Speaking of other dies, on the right hand side here I have another set of Spellbinders dies, also designed by Becca Feekin. These are her regular, not club, not subscription dies, and these two sets actually coordinate with each other. So the outer decorative frames can be mixed and matched. This is from Becca's 3D Vignettes collection that allows you to make these gorgeous, super dimensional cards that fold flat and slide into an envelope for easy mailing. So if you have this other die set, and I have names and links to all of these products below in my video description. So if you have this other die set, or if you wanna get it, check the video description for the proper name. You can use your Christmas set with the other set to make super dimensional cards. I'll link to Becca's video tutorial introducing her 3D vignettes collection to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. And it's just gonna blow your mind. Okay, enough chit chat, let's actually get to work. Here I've already created an A2 side folding card base, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I also have a white wood grain cardstock panel cut to the same size. The panel is going to go on the front of my card. I also have another wood grain panel, and I'm going to score it at quarter of an inch to create a hinge to be able to attach it onto the inside of my card to create that third or that second flap for my trifold card design. So you just need a regular size card base plus one extra panel to make the extra flap. Time to start die cutting. I'm going to tape that standard size wood grain panel to my standard size card base and I'm taping those together using low tech tape. I'm not adhering my wood grain panel onto the card base just yet as I will need to do my die cutting first and you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to position my Christmas greetings frame die on top and also tape it in place. Notice that my card base is open. This is how I'm going to take it to my die cutting machine to cut. I just need to cut the frame through the panel and the front of my card. I don't want to cut it all the way through my card base. So I have my first cut done. It's a detailed die, so it did not cut all the way through. Now that's actually normal. I have two layers of cardstock, the paper is pretty thick, so I actually anticipated that the die would not cut all the way through. I'm going to now separate the panel from the card base, and that's why I did not adhere the two together just yet. 
I used low tech tape here, the one that had the lowest tack and that I could find in my stash. And it still got adhered pretty well onto my paper due to all of that pressure in my die cutting machine. So I was careful and I gently peeled it off not to tear my paper. Now I have my front panel die cut, but my card base did not die cut all the way through. So I can now reposition the die in place. And when you do that, you'll be able to tell that your die actually fell in place, so to speak. So reposition the die, tape it in place again, and send it through the machine once again. Now remember to keep your card base open so you don't cut through the back of your card. Now I can go ahead and clean up my wood grain panel from all of the negative pieces and adhere the two together to create my card front. I'm also going to adhere that second wood grain panel, the one that had the quarter of an inch score line, and I'm going to adhere it onto my card base. I'm adding it on the inside of my card to create that second flap. Now I can plan the placement of the other window on my card. I don't have any tricks here, just basically eyeballing the placement through the main window on my design. I think I have it now where it needs to be. So I'm going to tape the die in place, again open my card and send it through the die cutting machine to cut. Now my platinum, my die cutting machine, sits off to the side on another desk and that's why I'm not showing the actual die cutting part on video. Okay, the card base is done. We've die cut all of the windows that we need on this card. You can actually keep cutting and maybe even cut one more in the back side of your card if you'd like to have your card be see-through all the way. Now on to die cutting the parts and pieces to embellish our card. For this, I'm using my Burnished Rose cardstock from Tonic Studios. I love, 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 love this paper for classy winter cards. It's just so pretty and the shine, the shine is very subtle. It's not overpowering. It's really, really gorgeous cardstock. I also used white glitter cardstock to die cut a few other elements for my project. I used tape and also glue to adhere that front wood grain panel onto the card base. And next I used just glue to adhere the rose gold frame onto it. In the same way, I used glue to adhere the rest of the elements in place to create the little scenes on each of the flaps. There are little slits in the hills. It's a genius design actually, so you can slide the houses and the trees and the little fence if you choose to die cut it. I didn't die cut the fence. So you can slide those elements into those slits so that you don't have those show on the back of the flap or on the back of your window. It's really clever. And you just need to remember to not put glue there when you go to adhere those in place. Just make sure to remember that because I almost forgot. If you add glue there, it will just glue it shut and you won't be able to take advantage of that slit. Lately, I've been loving using the Pretty Pink Posh jewels to embellish my cards. So that's exactly what I use to dress up all of the cards that I'm sharing today. These jewels make the most perfect little accents for any card. I also added some stamping onto my projects and I used clear stamps from Hero Arts and brown ink. My two trifold cards are slightly different. I added frame and hills onto one of the cards and then just hills onto another. I also used a regular smooth card stuck for the other card and thus I was able to stamp one additional sentiment on that second flap because the paper was flat and did not have any texture like that wood grain card stuck. Even though it's a trifold card, it still fits into a regular envelope. I even managed to find wood grain envelopes in my stash to match with the card design. The texture on these envelopes is actually very subtle, so it won't cause any problems when writing the address on the envelopes. Now, I also made one more card into a shaker, just for fun. You know, it's a regular card design, but I did add a little shaker element to make it super fun. I hope you guys will give this idea a try. If you do, remember to share online and tag us on social media. We always love seeing what you guys are making. On the screen, there is a link to a playlist with all of my Spellbinders video tutorials. Subscribe now to my channel not to miss any new card making videos. Love you guys. I'll see you next week.